how we get into it, kids. Now, remember, we're doing homework. Homework, yes. which is which is a thing that it's um, a series that we do. We're, no, no, no. I'm talking about, <laughs> and we're going to be reviewing the, mo- the movie, dog. We're going to jazz. <laughs> you know, Miss Booby got special needs. I like your T-shirt. <sighs> yeah. Well, let's give it some energy, and then I'll talk about my T-shirt. Yeah. Ooh. Feeling yeah. this energy. Ooh, girl, school is back in session, honey. Then he stuck it in me. Oh, class is dismissed. Girl, yes. welcome, welcome once again to Homework. This is Mike Diamond. This is Miss Matinga. And this is Booby. Booby. Yes. <laughs> this is a visual medium and Booby is taking yes. charge. Yes. Now, Booby, I see you've got some new shades on there. Some new, some new lenses. Yes. Yes. I wanted to feel like Matinga back in the Very day. Digit- oh, well, Very then digit- just go sit oh. on a fire hydrant. Oh, oh, oh trust. Booby, are those new glasses? Yes. They look so great. Thank I you. I love them. They do they great. also, do they turn into sunglasses? Yes. I could tell because they have just the barest, barest little tint indoors anyway. Mm. And I love it. A hint of tint. Yeah. I love it. There is an episode of Family Guy where Brian gets sunglasses a transition sunglasses and it's a kiki brian's the really? dog right brian's the dog yeah, yeah. right right and they're, they're they're really goofing on it but i happen to love my transition lenses oh, hello I'll i'm so glad you finally week. transitioned the because it's been on everyone's mind so on today's episode of homework we are doing one of our classic movie reviews that's right yeah right. Guys, oh my God! Back. Well, would you like to set it up, Booby? No, you're I'm so just, full I of just, piss and vinegar. I'm I'm loving your energy. Are Ms. you Mary. loving it, Mary? <laughs> you guys, you guys thought that that homework was gone forever. Some people it's were here. wishing and hoping back. and praying, wishing and hoping. and hoping. And um, I'm talking about the three of us. Oh my God! But we decided to give the kids some victuals along with a movie review, and I do want to say that this was Matinga's choice, this particular selection, and I'm, I'm here for it. You know what? We said we were gonna turn homework into our repository for, um, <laughs> we're all repositories. Our content su- dumpster. Suppository. Yeah, yeah so it's gonna be our content dumpster for classic, for, for film reviews. And, and icons. For, and icons and profiling icons. And I was thinking this week, you know, we've done a lot of culty kind of movies, but we haven't done like a classic, classic film of the golden era. And I wanna say that this film, Queen Bee, it's not one of those films. <laughs> it is not. It's not one of those films. It is not. And- you know what? It's 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 a Joan Crawford <laughs> mid fifties jam. Let's kick it off. I would like to start with a critic's review of this film. Uh, this comes from a critic named Ms. Matinga. She says, "What a hard, nasty little film." Yeah. <laughs> so this is 1955's Queen Bee, starring Queen Bee herself, Joan Crawford. As Ava Phillips, Barry Sullivan as Avery Phillips, Betsy Palmer as Carol Lee Phillips, John Ireland, the adorable, kind of haggard and drunken John Ireland. And supposedly packing. Yeah, Lucy Marlowe as Jennifer Stewart, and a, a blink and you will miss it. Yeah. Cameo by the fabulous and iconic Faye Ray. The only one, by the way, who bothers to do a Southern accent. Yeah. Yeah. They're in the South and none of them have Southern accents except for Miss Fay Ray, who's only in the first scene, kind of giving you like a, like a Blanche Dubois sort of feeling. Yeah. 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 And so good. Before we get into the recap, let me just um, show the kids. Today's t-shirt is Loca this bodega is Joyce. Ooh. Loca this bodega is Joyce. And on the back it says, learn it, bitch. Available through our merch shop. Links all over the place. Okay, so we mean we mean Joyce DeWitt. We mean Joyce DeWitt, honey. We don't mean yeah. Joyce Leslie. This film was directed by Ronald McDonough, or was it Ranald? Because isn't it spelt with an A? With an A. I saw that, and I thought, well, maybe they misspelled it. So does that mean and that at Mickey D's it's Randall McDonald? Randall McDonald. Randall McDonald. <laughs> only if you're only from Boston. Only. only <laughs> Um, oh, the, only in the South. And uh, also this film received two Academy Award nods for uh, uh, cinematography and the fabulous, 
fabulous costume design. Like a couple of these gowns stopped Ooh. me yeah. short, darling. Yeah, they were gorgeous. Gorgeous. Uh, particularly the last gown. Yes, with the, the satin one. The double layer. Which is, it's almost like she has a kite on the back of it. I was like, yeah. this bitch gonna take to the air. And the one right before that, when her and Lucy are having dinner, it's the black sparkly <gasps> tight, tight number. Tight, tight, oh, yeah. Thing. And it's like beaded and it's and all she's doing fabulous. Is dinner. Just yeah, having dinner. And then, and then one other, and you know, and then just to dispense with talking about the costumes, there's one more costume that made me laugh right at the is beginning. It where, is it where she has the fur lined hood on the cape? No, but that's fabulous. <laughs> it's so fabulous. And then she's hitting the husband with the with the little fur line thing, yeah. trying to annoy him. And it's so good. At the beginning, Lucy, who I believe is like the niece she's of Ava. Cousin. Cousin. Yeah. Uh, c- comes in in the morning to wake Ava up and bring her breakfast. And when, and Joan it is, <laughs> is in a sleeping gown. She's covered from here to the bottom in layers of taffeta and silk and she gets out of bed it had a cape yes like her, her pajamas had a cape miss thing your, your pajamas Girl. don't have a cape honey i was like yes mama she's got the gloves she's got the nightgown with the cape and she also has high-heeled shoes high-heeled bedroom slippers positioned yeah. to slip right into from bed so that she her feet never touch the floor how can you sleep in so many layers? Well, how many layers of paint does she sleep in? Oh, and the lighting design is so specific for Joan. Oh, so oh, let's yes. just let's just give a oh. recap. So it's the 50s, it's the deep south. They never really specify, but I think it's Mississippi. We start off cousin Jen, mousy, mousy p- potato face with raisin eyes, cousin Jen. Yeah. Who's come from Chicago to be Joan's secretary? Well, uh, apparently they had put her through school because I guess her parents had passed away. But they've but never it, met her. But they've never met her. And she's Joan's relative, but it's really the husband. It's Avery with the money who put the kid through school. Mm-hmm. So she has come after school, not to be like a maid or anything like that, but just to go live with them. But ostensibly she becomes kind of like the personal secretary. Like a helper. Like a helper, personal secretary, la la la. And Nanny. instant- very innocent. Do you say Danny? Nanny. Nanny. She's she, good. Yeah, she's good with the kids. She's a nanny. So it's this big plantation. And Avery, the husband, I guess, owns a mill, which I figured out yeah. later is a cotton mill. Right. Yes. So this is clearly like slave money. In that the they land got. Of money. And they were they, talking about slaves. Honey, yeah. racially, this film is problematic. Yes, yeah, it's yes. the fifties, but there's one point when um, what's it? Carol is talking about. Well, if your grandpappy didn't have a thousand slaves, a thousand and slaves, and there's a there's like the butler, the black guy in the room laughing, yeah. like he 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 he. Oh, the the treatment of the black people is very problematic. It, but like, isn't he about to come in and then he hears it and he just closes the doors? <laughs> Right, he's right. He's kind of like laughing about her story about, well, if your grandpappy didn't have a thousand slaves. Child, let me tell you, your grandpappy fought with Lee at Shiloh. It was Chickamauga, I think. Well, I'll have you know, child, that your grandpappy had a thousand slaves. And then there's also uh, Miss George, who's the mammy. The mammy. She's the mammy. Yeah. And then there's one other young girl who never says a word and who like slips in and out of rooms like a phantom. She's like she's a ghost. With a, like with a coat or she'll hand you like a thing. And but like she just like it, like like so quietly. She's a person of color. Hardly. Yeah. She doesn't yeah, even yeah, walk. She just kind of appears. She just appears and glides through the room and hand and grabs the coat and slides and out. There's another black dude who's one of the stable hands. There are two black. Yes. One of the most disgusting moments in the film to me is, um, and it was funny, and then it was gross. Um, towards the end, and we'll get we'll get to the whole story when Joan and Potato Face Girl are having dinner, and Joan says, two women alone in a world full of men." Meanwhile, there are two men in the room with Standing them. In the there. room, they happen to be black men, right? Who right. work as servants. I was just like, oh my God, that would not fly today, bitch. No. Imagine the two of us having dinner alone together. Two women alone in a world of men. It's incredible. It's of its time. I mean, for Christ's sake, even Disney like has those crows 
in uh, in Dumbo that yeah. are clearly minstrels, right? And uh, so, and you know, Song of the South, for God's sake, yeah, Fantasia, Fantasia. right? Barina, I love to uh, American Idol. She turned it. Yes. The, so the movie opens. Lucy uh, uh, shows up. Uh, no, Lucy's the name of the actress. Cousin Lucy Jen. Marley, cousin Jen. Cousin Jen shows up, and she meets all the ancillary ancillary characters. Not Joan. Jo they hold Joan's entrance back so that Joan can make an entrance. Mm, right. And it's so obvious and I love it. I love it. And so she meets everybody. There's Avery, who's Joan's husband. There's Carol, who's his sister. There's Judd, yeah. who's her beau, who works her for beau. Avery. They're gonna get There's married. Fay Ray, who's poor Sue McKinnon, who's yes. gone crazy because she was jilted. And eventually her brother shows up. But those five yes. are in the parlor and Joan, makes her appearance. So at the beginning, we neglected to mention that Eva is the one that stole Avery from Sue. And she literally stole him on his wedding day. And that's why Sue ends up like this crazy sort of Blanche Dubois, antebellum right. diva. Very, very big old ruby red dress. She, what does she that say about Avery? That he was, that that he was hypnotized by the Queen Bee's Punani. But it also sets up the fact that that Joan is a fucking bitch. Like they're all having a lively conversation and then Joan shows up and suddenly they all deflate. Right. They just deflate and like literally like they won't look. And you know, of course, poor Lucy, she has no idea. She's excited to meet Joan. And they're like, yeah, la 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 la. Ooh, and of course, la. Joan, Joan sweeps in like such a diva. I do want to say I was doing a little research and Christina Crawford names this film, Queen Bee, and Harriet Craig, and says that these are the two films in which her mother really comes through, like through the character. Like these two characters really were like her. Joan. Yeah, mm. and another interesting point, there's a beautiful grand staircase in, uh, as you enter the house. Right. It, the, it is, uh, they recreated that staircase for Mommy Dearest. Watch Mommy Dearest, it's the same exact staircase. Wow. And also, also the white number with the black uh, scarf, also Miss Faye Dunaway is wearing in that film and Joan wears it in this film. It's a recreation of the Jean-Louis uh, clothing. I mean, if your only reference for Joan is that you've seen Mommy Dearest. This You'll is, get it. This is the closest representation. What you want from Joan, you're getting. My Carol, you look sweet. Even in those tacky old riding clothes. It was Joan. It was it was Joan through and through, you know. She's toxic. And, yeah, and she and she uses her feminine wiles. Such as they are. So, yeah, at, with that at, hair. I mean, at this point, that bag of flour had mites in it. Right. <laughs> but, no. but, but there are moments when she still looks glamorous yeah. and put together. Yeah. She's a battle axe. She's, she's, a, yeah. she's, she's a bitch, man. She's wasn't, she wasn't the women lovely. No, well, oh, this, God, is no. this is 1955. This is 1950. The women, women. The women. Was, was the 32? 39. 39. 39. So this is, you know, 15 years, 16 years later. I mean, right. this yeah. is between her like mid century modern post Mildred Pierce phase pre gargoyle transition moment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's got the right. eyebrows, she's got yeah. that hard hairdo. Yeah. You know, the lips. That she was always doing like her edges yeah. throughout the film. So oh, honey, that kitchen is clean. Darling. That kitchen is clean. So the gist that of the film is, is she is the matriarch of this family. Oh, she also has two little kids. How? Because she's like 60. But she has these two kids that are like yeah. five. The the boy was okay. The girl, a terrible little child actress. I didn't yes. like her. I thought she was unattractive. And I'm not trying to read a child actress. <laughs> but you are. Oh, <laughs> but you are, Blanche. And, and but not not only that, the one moment later in the film when Miss Georgia gets her moment to talk about the love that she lost, okay, and she's like, "Oh, he made me laugh," and the little white girl starts crying because it has to be about the little white people, right? Mm -hmm. Cutting off Miss Georgia. No, I was in love once myself. Oh, but it didn't work into anything. He was just no good. Still, it did make me laugh. <laughs> Oh, no, honey, what's the matter? So Joan, uh, excuse me, Eva 
Eva. is mean to everyone. She's particularly mean to Carol and eventually to Jen, but she manipulates and kind of tortures the men also. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. She's, she's she's not nice, honey. So so the but just to get to the crux of what the which story we haven't is done yet on, of what the story is hanging on. So she is married to Avery. But many years ago, before she married Avery, she was in a relationship with Avery's business partner, Judson Prentice. Judd. Judd. Judson. And her and Judson went to New York to meet a to meet Avery, and she jumped ship and decided to stay with Avery. But she continued to sleep with Judson, and it was also intimated that she has had other affairs. This turns and pl this plus her evil nature and her nastiness turns Avery into a sour, nasty hermit of a alcoholic, totally sleeping in a completely separate room, by the way, mm -hmm. than than her. And so, so there's that conflict right there. Now, what did, what did we make of Avery? He also has a scar, and his nickname is Beauty. Bad scar, Beauty. Beauty. He has a scar from a car accident. Shane. I thought he was cardboard, but I think that's what this Man. required. My dear, Eve, I've told you before, never come between me and my liquor. You'll get knocked down. Careful, darling. You might give Jennifer the wrong impression. I wouldn't want to do that. My dear Jennifer, please don't get the wrong impression. If I seem drunk, it's because I am drunk. I thought John Ireland, who's playing Judson, had a little bit more color to his performance. Well, uh, right away, he's like, fuck you, Eva, from the very beginning. Yeah, like, he, he can't stand her. He can't, It's and he, he let it be known. You're like some fancy kind of disease. I had it once, now I'm immune. I'll make you sorry for this. Will you? You know I will. Do you think he was handsome? I would have done it. I thought he was handsome. Yeah. Down. I would have done it. I would have done it. I thought he was hot. And uh, I'll get some of the Irish coffee. You know what I'm saying? As for Avery, um, just and I, I can't vouch for this, but my suspicion is that Avery was into water sports. Now, yeah. part of it is that um, so they got the scar. He got a scar in a car accident because apparently, as it turns out, it is revealed later that Joan faked a pregnancy to get him to marry her. Right, right. And then they she shit out a couple of kids from him. Right. So then, uh, so then, you know, Lucy has just arrived and she's headed downstairs to meet everyone. Lucy. When she, uh, Lucy, Lucy Marlowe. Cousin Jen. Cousin, cousin Jen, I'm sorry. Uh, cousin, Why don't we cousin just Jen. call her Cousin It? Cousin It yeah. comes downstairs and she doesn't mean to, but she hears Carol and Judson talking about uh, that they are uh, gonna get married, but they're keeping it secret from the rest of the family, but they are engaged. And she's like, no, I don't want Ava to know, da 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 da, because she knows that Ava will try and destroy her happiness. It's Eva so, as an evil. It, Eva, yeah, Eva. And so she, uh, so, but now Lucy has heard of this, but she doesn't, uh, she doesn't, uh, tell anyone now already you see the judson drama. yeah judson who has been who had been sleeping with joan is now going to marry this young pretty thing and joan like in all her movies is plating is playing like this this fading camellia who's always looking in the mirror you know you know, you know trying to to recover her beauty and what she was before and control people yeah and also when she sees younger women, like at one point they're having dinner and she sits down, she realizes she's in front of the mirror and she says, yes. she says, cousin, it, you sit here so you can admire yourself in the mirror. That, but yeah. I don't think that that's what that moment is about. That moment jumped out to me and I'm a, I'll, I'll tell you what I think it is. After, in a yeah, after Carol? When, in, yeah. in a minute. So uh, I just want to say cousin Jen lurking on the stairs like that light skinned servant girl. Yes. Bitch, you overhear a conversation. Take a step back. That's none of your business, okay? I just don't want her to know that we're engaged, that's all. It, it doesn't make that much difference, does it? It makes me 14 kinds of a heel with your brother. After all, he is my friend and my job. Step off, girl. You just got into the house, okay? But they weren't trying, to, like, terribly hard. To, to they're having a loud, it. Yeah, they're having a loud ar argument in the foyer of the house. And also, at no point do Cousin Jen and Judson get along or like each other. And they let it be known that they don't like each other, which I found interesting. Yeah. Um, I thought they would be like natural sort of compatriots. 
Well, she doesn't, doesn't like him. She doesn't like Avery. Avery doesn't like her. Nobody likes Queen B. Um, the, the little kid says to her right away, I don't like I don't you. like you. I hate you. I'm not kissing cousin. And but Jennifer's Car- like, well, then fuck you. But Carol, <laughs> Carol, se- Carol seems to like cousin Jen. You're just in time for tea. That's what we call it when we drink too much in the afternoon. <laughs> Carol seems to he like does, it. but she sees the writing on the wall. Right. Yes, yes, She's, yes, yes. Carol's trying to get out of this house, out from under. I think the thing is that nobody in this family wants to work. And that's why they stay on the plantation and take this abuse. Right. Because Carol, yeah. can't you just move? Right. Yeah. Just leave. Dash. Well, dash. Uh, uh, a- any of them. Although maybe in the 50s, you couldn't just dash. Mm. Much like in Harriet Craig, somehow this harpy of a woman just has her claws in these people and they're too afraid to stand up to her. Judson stands up to her and it doesn't go well. You know, she's vengeful and evil. Well, she's a narcissist. She's like super narcissist. So she has things on people that she will use against them. Yes. Easily. Easily. And also she's not afraid to resort to violence honey she coke locks cousin jen on the staircase at one oh, i gagged at that part oh, you don't God. know how much i laughed i laughed I so hard. <laughs> oh i'm so happy for them i don't know what bob was like why are you laughing <laughs> but the true shade is later when she comes back down for dinner wearing that fur thing she's like looking in the mirror she's like oh yes i smacked you earlier i'm so sorry mm-hmm. right i don't think she even says she's sorry she's just like oh i smacked you sir earlier she, I was, what she I wasn't, says I wasn't is myself i'm sorry about this afternoon like yes. not being not being not like i'm sorry i hauled up and smacked you hun and then when she finds out that Carol and J- and and Judson are going to get married, clearly she thought she was going to get some more. From she Judd. she meets Judd in the in the in the room with the lights yeah. on at one point, like in the arboretum, and like she's trying to seduce him. This is when um, cousin Jen, who once again is on the staircase spying, by the Watching way, this all. yeah, uh, she, this is when she finds out. Oh shit, this bitch. Is, is like conniving and sleeping around on her husband mm. and everything that everyone has been saying is true. But, you know, she's trying to seduce. It's uh, all such John a soap Ireland. opera. It's so melodrama. Judd, darling, are you here? I'm here. You knew I'd be here. Of course I did. It's been so long. It'll be longer. She's trying to seduce John Ireland and he's like, no, no, no. And she's like, she's all over him. She's trying to kiss him. Doesn't she wrap a phone cord around his neck yes! at one point? Yes. <laughs> and she wraps, the, that's what That's what I was headed to. She was, a, so she's sitting down, he's like, no. And she says, oh no, you'll be mine. And then she takes the phone cord and wraps it around his neck. Like she's gonna like strangle, strangle him. Aren't I wicked? Yes, as a matter of fact, you are. Yeah. It's like diva, diva behavior, huh? Well, my favorite line in the whole movie is when she says, I think to cousin Jen, any man is my man if I want it that way. Right. Yes, girl. Yeah. Maybe 20 years earlier. Put that on a t-shirt, bitch. I know men and I know Judd. You know your men. Any man's my man if I want it that way. But mm. she must be getting to some crazy shit, honey, to have all these men after her. Because even that when that unnamed character drops her off after drops the party. He wants to get all. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. And she's always going Still off to parties. She, well, <laughs> she's always going off to parties without her husband. Or as right. they call it, a frolic. A frolic. I'm ready for any kind of frolic. I bet you are, yeah. anal bead bitch. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> she's, so, you know, Joan's camping it up, honey. She's she's full force giving you. She. It, it's not so much a bee as like a spider. She is yeah. some she's or maybe even a praying mantis she's yeah. some kind of non-human evil entity Deadly. Jo- no joan really was <laughs> she yeah she was and at she one point really she, really she gives you dancer leg at one point sitting on the city right yeah. um yeah. you see that line you see that line that's a, so, a different joan film that's Great tort film. song right yeah so i hear a siren maybe it's joan that's that's my house. So it all starts bubbling over because Carol and Judson are going to get married. Eva is not having it. And 
she walks in on Carol and Jen looking at blueprints of a house that Carol and they're Jen are going to. They're so happy and animated about they're it. They're so happy and they're like so having cute. a girl talk and Joan steps on the fucking steps blueprint. Steps on it. I forgot what I was saying. With that, that, that pump, that fuck me pump. That fuck and, me pump. And kick something out of the way so the blueprint rolls up. Yeah. She's just a nasty bitch. And then there's a you, by the way, the term come fuck me pumps that Joan made up that term. That's Joan's term. She came up with that term. It's very fitting. Come fuck me pumps. Yeah, it's very fitting. Yeah. And then so, um, and now, meanwhile, her ineffectual, damaged, alcoholic husband hides for much of the film in his very man cave. Right. Very man cave room. Right. And at one point, Lucy goes uh, and cousin knocks- Jen. Cousin Jen, Lucy Marlowe, the actress, cousin Jen, cousin it, goes and knocks on the door and, you know, and tries to intercede and says, you know, don't you understand that your husband, that your wife is trying to destroy the happiness of Judd and Carol. And at this point, she knows that Judd had slept with with Eva and she knows that uh, that that everything is fucked up. But she says, listen, you need to intercede. This is your wife. And he grabs her and kisses her, mm-hmm. which I mm-hmm. thought was so gross. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it was gross. I thought it was kind of gross. Booby, what did you make of that? It was gross. Okay, I'm going to tell you why I think it wasn't gross. He tells her up front, I'm, I'm bad news. You don't want any of this. You don't want it. I'm you don't bad want news. it. Not much good in this effect. But you must Get away it. from me. Step off, darling. I'm into water sports. You don't want it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm into white castles and also, water sports. And all kinds of water sports. And also, yes. he reads her because he says, what lovely eyes, a little small, perhaps. So, what does it look like when they're wide open, when they're gaping? <laughs> like, <laughs> you see me wide open and gaping. Trust. So he does kiss her, and then he's like, get away from me. Get away <laughs> yeah. from me. But then she's kind of into it oh honey she's moist she's she moist through yeah she, she won't so it. not that she's nefarious but everyone has an agenda mm. everyone has an agenda in this film i don't think she set out to seduce the husband she didn't but when he kisses her she's like i feel that the thing about that character of cousin jen is it's not a showy role it's not a flashy role she's yeah intentionally made to look dowdy the character and i'll give credit to the actress genuinely cares about people yeah i think she feels sympathy for him i mean she does become attracted to him but i think she does feel bad for him she clearly likes those kids she she really likes carol she doesn't like judd also there's a horrifying scene earlier where avery shoots the family shoots dog. The dog are you going hunting not exactly i'm gonna kill this dog I guess. Because it's, it's suffering. But it's suffering. Was it? Because it hopped up yeah. and ran off into the woods pretty sprightly. Well, well, no. appa- apparently, though, in the in the, in terms of the story, it was an old lame dog. Although it did jump off that chair, like really like, yeah, mm-hmm. like oh, okay, let's go. Yeah. We're going to go so, into the woods. <laughs> but apparently it was lame and it was old and it was in pain. Because at first I was like, he ain't going to kill that dog. He needed to take Eva out in the woods and take that lame old biscuit and shoot her. And shoot her. Damn. Yes. yes so, but yes, it yes. all comes to a head. Oh, and but, at one point, J- J- Judson says to uh, to uh, to to Mr. Avery, he's like, "If she were my wife, I'd beat her." I beat her. <laughs> <laughs> if she were mine, I'd beat her. She's not yours. Judd, keeping it real. Mm. And you know what? She deserved a beating. She oh, she deserved a beating. She but, deserved. A but beat what she down. gets is a sparkly bracelet. Now you can die happy. What an odd thing to say. A lovely Which sparkly is worth $110,000. Bob and I know? looked it up. All of the jewelry was real. All yeah. of the jewelry, the brooches the, that she was wearing. The swan diamonds. brooch. It was beautiful. All diamonds. It was beautiful. Honey, the clothing. This was just your kind of mid-range pot boiler. But the cinematography, that fucking house and the clothes 
the clothes were gorgeous that bracelet I, now it was clearly diamonds what was in the inset was it rubies rubies uh, uh, i mean in color that I'm, I'm gonna have to look that up now that that must be gorgeous and at one point That's she incredible. has judd put it on her later after avery gives it to her looks real everything i have is real i'd be the last to deny it meaning but remember then, but- you had it <laughs> but, but but then really, really weird. Jennifer runs in. She's like, wait, let me see if it's real. <laughs> wait, let, cousin, wait, even, wait let a minute. Real. <laughs> hola, and, she, hola. and she like bites it. <laughs> <laughs> so Eva being Little Miss Evil decides to let Carol know that not only is, hey, listen, get married on Sunday if you want to, but people are going to talk. Oh, wait, first she implies, bitch, are you pregnant? OK, yes. yes. And she's like, because, you know, people are going to talk, girl. People are going to talk. Meaning, she, I'm going to spread that, that rumor. Exactly. Exactly. And this is after she's like, like kind of seduces a psychotherapist to endorse the notion that Carol is having an unnatural relationship with the young boy. Because she comforts thought, him. Yeah. And it's like she's trying to destroy Carol. And she used her feminine wiles on this. On this, Dr. Uh, Pearson, therapist. it's a girl. Your your feminine would have to be way wilder, way wilder, way I wilder mean. for for you to be able to pull something like that off. Well, also, she's, it's so she's evil. got that like scented handkerchief, and she's like, you'd think he'd never seen a beautiful woman before. Really, that Dr. Pearson, he's so absurd. He actually trembles when I talk to him. You'd think he'd never seen a beautiful woman before. I'm like, I think at night, Dr. Pearson is a beautiful woman, honey. That looked like a little homosexual to me, dear. He wanted that gown. That's what he wanted. So, but he's there because the little boy keeps waking up with these nightmares, which we'll revisit later. He keeps having these nightmares about pulling out of the driveway and there's a mountain, blah, 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 blah. And he wakes up screaming. So after Joan implies that Carol is a huzzy who's six months pregnant, which isn't the case, then she decides she's going to let Carol know that Judd is having an affair on her. And she is just that with her. shit eating grin. And she, but but she but plays affair, with her like a cat the, with a mouse. Because she's affairs like, with them. Eva, just to be so that we know the affair that he had was with Eva, and he had not told Carol that he no, had slept with Eva. But Eva strings it out. Like first she, yeah. you know, Carol's like, no, 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 no. And Joan ask is him. just eating it up. Ask, ask him. him. Ask him. Ask and him. finally she's like, you know, who was it with? And Joan's like, who do you, you think? You know, who do you think? <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Tell me who it is. Who do you think? And then she's like, are you afraid? I heard, I thought Phillips were afraid. She was like, I'm not afraid. Oh, girl. (sighs) Well, she better be afraid because the next day. Oh, wait. Also, it's called Queen Bee because Carol tells cousin it, go read a book about bees. Right. Yes. One queen bee, she stings her rivals to death. Okay. So. The next day. And is that true? No, the other queens will create swarms of their own colonies. Of their they own. just go off into a I colony. I've seen swarms yeah. of queens, honey. Yeah. Huh. Tru- well, I have seen a queen sting someone to death, too. Yes, yes, yeah. girl. So, Booby, the next day, Car- what happens with Carol? She dies. Judd and, and Cousin It go looking for her in the stables because that's where she gets that good BBC honey from that stable hand. Yeah. But also because when she's depressed, she goes riding. And they see her hanging there. She clearly has hung herself. She's got one little shoe dangling from her foot. And they gag. They yeah. gag. She was so upset about Judd confirming that he had been fucking Eva 10 years ago that she hung herself. Props the is- to, the, to the filmmakers. That scene, they had live chickens in the stable. Yeah. yeah. And it, it added such a realness to it when Jen goes running out, the chickens like all scattering. It was like cinema verite, very that. It just, it added so much to it. Yes. The I mean, you know, a body hanging there with some chickens running uh, around. I mean. Realness. Well, cause I think when they walked in, the chickens were underneath the body trying to get some of that blood. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but they but blood you know, chickens. but <laughs> those blood chickens. Those blood chickens kind of- don't play. Honey, like blood diamonds, not good. That was the original title for the film was Blood Chickens Don't Play. Blood, chicken. blood Chickens. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and it's uh, it's sequel, Blood Testicle. <laughs> <laughs> no, Blood Chicken 2. Blood, blood Chicken, chicken 2. two. Mm. <laughs> two piece and a biscuit. Hot wings. Okay, so. Uh, but mind you, she they slept together before Joan was even married right. to Avery. But he never told her. But he never told. He her. never told. And her. they and all hate her so much. You know, at that at that point, it's a lie of omission. But 
he wasn't fully up front with her. But Judd thinks it was Avery that spilt the tea. So he quits the mill and then right. goes off to New Orleans for a couple of weeks. Two weeks go by. There's a right. funeral, but we don't see it. Two weeks go by. Joan's happy as a clam. A clam. Well, when they when she first found out, she was gasping and she was she put her makeup all over the mirror and she was just <laughs> It's about Carol. She's dead, Eva. She's killed herself. <laughs> this She's is a mess. She has a she has a Joan freak out. Yeah. yeah, but this is where it becomes narcissism. Jen runs in and she's like, Carol's dead. She killed herself. But it's all about Joan being upset. Right. I, I think she smears the cold cream on the mirror so yeah. she doesn't have to look at herself. <laughs> Because she knows that she caused it the same way in that later scene. She doesn't want to look in the mirror and has Jen sit there. She right. doesn't actually want to see herself in certain moments. That's what I think. I, I that's agree. What, that's, that's what I would say, that she didn't want to see herself. Yeah, but not because she wasn't young and lovely. <laughs> right. It's, it's, right. Be, it's because, she, because she could see the monster within. Well, and she the says, monster. she monster. says, you know, she has moments in the film where she says, I am a bad person. I do she has bad that freak things. out moment in the yeah. in Carol's room. Yeah, oh, and she's like, delicious. And she destroys all of Carol's things and then and and moves her to the other side of the house. Right. And you know what? How dare you? So apparently Carol had been in that room since she was a little girl. How dare you rifle through someone's that's like it's like an assault. It's yeah. it was what that was one of the most appalling things that I thought because like, I loved it. Can you imagine? And she was like rifling through the drawers. But that's yeah. giving you the mommy dearest, honey, where she takes the riding crop and knocks everything off the counter. And she's like, yeah, you have to be from the South to be any good. Like, <laughs> As if you have to be from the South to be any good. I wish I could get rid of them as easy as this trench. Whoever made mommy dearest for sure like just took so many examples. A lot of the hairdos. Right. Faye Dunaway rocks and Mommy Dearest. So much was taken from this film and Harriet Craig. Oh, wait, there's another character, Mrs. Breen, the nurse. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so, so Carol had been taking care of the kids for the most part. Carol and uh, and uh, the cousin, cousin Jen. And Georgia. Uh, so, uh, and Georgia. So, but she... at. Uh, out of spite, she brings in this very mean nurse ratchet lady, Nurse Breen, to take care of the kids. <laughs> she and calls herself Breen Breenzy. Children, let's remember our manners and get all your things picked up, or Breenzy will slap lazy hands, Miss Breen. But uh, Miss Breen is abusing the children. Literally. Ab like literally abusing the children. And Joan is co-signing on this bullshit. Those are Joan's kids, not Joan's kids, but they're Ava, Eva's kids. But, but Eva's recuperating from the stress of having caused someone to take their own life. Except she looks fabulous and she's <laughs> fine. In every scene. Yeah, she's done, she's yes. done. And so finally, uh, Avery is done. Like after he runs in and this bitch is beating his son, he fires her on the spot. The next morning, Joan comes in and says- But who's with him? Cousin Jen. Uh, cousin Jen. And Miss so, Breen insinuates, uh, she was like, I see things perfectly. Like she's you think, waiting. She's but, like, y'all are into water think, sports. If you're not out of this house tomorrow morning, I'll give myself the pleasure of throwing you out. Do you understand? I understand everything perfectly. Of course, you know, I shall have to report this um, episode to your wife. But Booby, don't you think that Joan brought Miss Breen in to create that very lie? Yes. Yeah. Yes. She's no yeah. dummy. Yeah. And so like the next day, Joan breezes in and she's like, oh, I know that you want to get rid of Miss Breen, but we're not. And I think that you might want to get a divorce, but we're not. Because if you do, not only am I going to call you an alcoholic in public and say that you're cheating with my niece and uh, and that, you know, I'm going to blame Carol's suicide on you. I'll completely destroy you and la la. But she does it with this icy coolness. that's like, I got this and Very I got Joan you. Crawford. Because she knows no, that she Joan. do. She, she got do. him. Cause she the queen bee, yo. Yeah, she the queen bee. Don't be stupid enough to think I won't fight you if you try anything. I'll use any weapon I can find. And there are weapons. You're a known alcoholic. 
Miss Breen has her filthy imagination. And your own sister, Carol, when she found out about you. You can imagine how it would sound. You wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah. How much and of this movie is her in real life? Or was her in real life? She wasn't murderous. That we know of. But she was a bitch. But she was a bitch. Honey, her own daughter, Maybe. Christina. Honey. Uh, yes, I, I, I've heard that too. But her own daughter says this was the closest to her that she ever portrayed in a film. And of course- Christina need Christina, to sell books, darling. Christina and Chris, who was yeah. the boy? And Christopher, they were uh, um, taken out of the will. So she did have an excuse. She had to, an axe to grind. To, yeah, but there are people on both sides. Like there were actors that said, no, Joan was a professional and she loved her kids. And uh, and there were people that said, no, nah, Joan was a stark raving bitch. People and I could have totally different see her parenting styles, darling. And children are a handful. Yeah. Now, mind you, Joan. Mamacita. Mamacita was that Joan's. Mamacita was Joan's Mamacita, real life personal real, right. secretary assistant, assistant who apparently did. She was love German. Her. She was not Mexican, by the way. Right. Yeah. She just called her Mamacita. But uh, now, no one, they never mentioned that Joan has two other daughters that were twins. They're never mentioned yes. in, in film and stuff like that. But those two daughters who never speak to the press, they, by the way, got the inheritance at the end, said that they loved their mother dearly, that yes, Joan because was very they, strict. Because they got the dollars, darling. But the they ones did... that spoke out or and possibly made shit up, and I'm not doubting people's memories or whatever, but you know, how much of that is yeah. true? Some of it probably, but uh, I wasn't there. You weren't there. You know who was there? Jim Beam, okay? I That's think who this, was there. This is what Jim Beam you know how much was, was worth? definitely there. Yeah, what? I think- under two million. Who? Christina Eight, Crawford? Eight point five million. Joan Crawford. At the end? Yeah. Technically, that's, her, technically that's a nineteen seventies dollar. Two p two million. But that's a nineteen seventies dollars. Right. That's a lot of that's like a lot. money. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. So um, you know. and they and they said that Joan was a taskmaster and yes, she was very, very strict, but that she was a great mom and they loved her dearly. Mind you, Joan never had a biological child. Right. She only she adopted, and I'm sure I am sure it's because she wanted to keep her figure. You know, I want to sure get back to it. Queen B, but in Mommy Dearest, there's that scene where her and the lawyer Greg, who I thought was always super hot, are walking yeah. on the beach, and he's like, "You're too vain to be pregnant," and she says, "I was pregnant eight times with French show. I lost all of them, but all these years, I thought she was saying I was pregnant eight times with Groucho. I was pregnant seven times with Francho. I lost them." I thought with Groucho. She, Groucho she, Marx. Yeah, I was like, yo, she took eight of Groucho's loads. That's <laughs> but wasn't she with wasn't she with Groucho at one point? I'm sure she was with everybody at some I point. I heard he was endowed. Really? Endowed, yeah. really, darling. She was also with uh, you know, who was the um uh, uh he was Hollywood royalty. Uh it was um, her first husband. Um, Pickford, uh, Fairbanks, 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 uh, yeah, she Fairbanks was, Jr. Fairbanks. She was with know right. that man was fine. he was tasty, he was tasty, he was fine. She had some love, and Francho Tone, she stole from Betty Davis, she was a bitch, but he ended up with Gloria Graham, which is a whole other oh, and Miss Gloria, oh, and, got, and he got he got beat down by her muscle, like Gloria. <laughs> no, by her very angry, muscly boyfriend at the time. But that's a whole, that's completely. Off let's get back Queen to Queen B. B. Okay, so she's yeah. going to go to a party and Avery has decided to kill her. First, he's going to shoot her and then he First sees the kid playing her. in the yard. He's like, oh no, I can't do that. It'd be I too messy. To them all, so he's like, you know what? Let me buy her a really expensive bracelet. But, and but to and fool pretend, her. And, and pretend. And pretend that they're going to have a second honeymoon and that yes. they're going to be all in lovey-dovey again. And everyone around town thinks that they're in love again. Right. And, he, and for a week, he plays it out and he and he gets Joan back. Mm -hmm. he, yeah. You know, he gets her. You know, she believes it. She believes. Yes. It. yes. She believes it. I believe it, too, with that bracelet. That Honey. bracelet. Yeah. But, you know, like but she's he, like, why does this bracelet smell like Aaron? And when she but when he gives her the bracelet, <laughs> like he 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 puts the box Queen in P. front of him. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, go ahead. What? He puts the box in front of him as she's trying to kiss him. And when she and then when she does kiss him, he keeps his arms at his side. So his body language is saying, I, I can't stand I, you. Yeah. I can't right. stand you. 
so the so a week later they're having that little dinner party uh just uh cousin jen and Joan in the black sparkly tight fitting gown. And he comes in and starts to play his role and get her and get her back. This is all so unexpected. I'm simply overwhelmed. And I might add, not at all convinced. I'll go to your parties and dinners any way you want to go. I want to be with you. If you really feel this way, I couldn't be happier. And then they're apparently headed to this party. But at this point, Judson shows up as well. And he finds out, oh, it wasn't Avery that spilled the tea. Yes, it, it, was, it, Eva it was Eva. That's and important. It, and he's like, he thought it was Avery. I thought it was him. I thought he changed his mind. It was Eva who told Carol. Didn't you know? No, I didn't know. But now I do. And so then he has a confrontation with Avery about like, where's the farewell letter? I know what you're going to do. Well, what, what, what is he going to do? He's going to kill the bitch and How himself. How are you going to do that? Automobile. 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 Right. automobile, darling. They never say car, yes. so it's automobile. And I thought it was interesting that they reveal the, t- the climax of the film before the climax of the film happens. Right, right. It's such an odd thing they also reveal it in the trailer which i watched which is also kind of weird yeah but but, but twist a twist a twist avery does twist. not take her to the party judd beats him to it runs okay. down says and he's like oh avery's on a business call i'll drive you there and he'll meet you there she's right. like no i'll wait around he's like no no he wants you to come come along and she can't drive come along she, oh come no, that along was another part that was another frolic she went to where she couldn't take the car because it hurt her arms, right. yes. whatever. That so, was a different frolic. There were so many frolics. So Judd and Eva take off in his car to go. He's going to bring her to this party and it's raining buckets and he's going like 100 miles an hour. And then yeah. Avery comes downstairs like, where's my wife, yo? And cousin Jen is like, oh, I, got pee. I got to pee, where's my wife? <laughs> and so, um, well, that reminds me of something really disgusting. Do you know in ancient China, if a man had to urinate in the middle of the night, he wouldn't even get out of bed. He would just roll over and pee inside of his wife. And that's such ha- a lie. No, and that is she, a lie. No, and she'd have to get out of bed and use the chamber pot. No, that's wow. true. That's how misogynistic and, and patriarchal that culture was. And oh my god, was. I love that. Oh, you're disgusting. So I love that. Well, listen, if some hot man like woke me up and was like, "Babe, I gotta pee, but I don't want to get out of bed, so I'm gonna pee in you," I'd be like, "Baby, baby, oh." oh. Well, yes, that, ex- that explains why it makes you why- think he's gonna do it in your mouth. Oh, because no. oh. it's <laughs> hey, if it's flaccid, it's not. It's 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 gonna be too flaccid. No, to and you got a, a morning Woody because you got to pee. Oh, because I thought you were gonna say no, because you got to really lose hold, and I was gonna get really upset. You know, Miss <laughs> Matinga, so upset with you, boo. Miss <laughs> Matinga, you've been you've been having that fantasy so long that for thirty years you've been walking around with urinal cakes up your butt. <laughs> you're just waiting for someone to make that happen. That's what my ex used to call me, his little urinal cake. Oh, my little oh. urinal cake. Yeah. Okay, so. Speaking of urinal cakes. Speaking of urinal Eva. cakes. Eva. So, yes. so Eva is in the car and she's like, oh, no, you're a good driver. And yeah, Judd, well, she's like, she, he's because he's saying, oh, it's raining. We could slide off the road. And she's like, oh, no, you're a good driver. And honey, she's living her best life. So I got my man. But look how fast they're going. It. And they're, but she, you know, and she's like, she's not suspecting anything at first. Right. Not at all. Right. Yeah. And, and Avery's giving chase in his car somewhere behind them. There's maybe they have like a two minute lead. I like the rain. Funny how a car skids on a wet road. A lot of people get killed on a night like this. I'm not worried. You're a good driver. And of course, Judd's plan is to drive off the road and kill them both, which he does. But he does it because he knows not only does Avery have kids, because his fiance's dead, and ba- and it's because of Joan. Yeah. So not only does Avery have kids, he also has Jen. Right. Because that could happen. He could feel that too. So he's like, he sacrifices himself. Yeah, he did. Because he has nothing to live for and he hates her. And he right. hates her. And of course, they have a dramatic scene of the car flipping over and it catches and, and fire. And at first, when she when she catches it, the, what's going on, she's like, wait a second. And she's on the steering wheel. And it's very, <laughs> right. it's very, it's very like mahogany. She's like, who posted me? Camera's she's like, shaking. Ah! Stop it. Let's go. Stay on, Eva. Stop it. Eva. 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 Eva.
And so good. Avery finds the car. It went over the cliff and it's on fire. The first thought in my head was, can he salvage the bracelet? Oh, I shit. mean, because at those temperatures, would it be damaged? The diamonds will not burn. Darling. No, no. I bet, I bet you he snatched it back. She, she, she better have. Yes. So yeah. well, after, the coroners, they, they would give it back to him anyway. They, would, know, they, they would keep it, bitch. If you saw that bling. Yeah, Honey. but he's going to be like, did, did anyone Where's the bling? The bracelet? Where's the bling, please? What bracelet? All we saw was charcoal, darling. Oh, by the <laughs> way, Joan calls people darling a lot in this. Darling. Yes. Oh, darling. So the film ends with Joan's dead, Judd's dead, Carol's dead. The chickens have been fed lots of blood. Avery's going down <laughs> to the police for questioning, and it's sort of implied that he and Jen end up together. Because right. Jen goes, she, she says, I'll, I'll go, go with, with you. you. By right. the way, I'll go with you. Does that mean that they're leaving the kids? Oh, no, they have servants. Right. Well, they have Miss Georgia. Yeah, so the kids, because I, I was watching the film just now, and I was like, they're going to leave the kids alone in the middle of the night? Now that Breenzi's hit the road, they still have Miss Georgia. Right. But now right. here's a question. As Joan and Judd go over the hill and crash, at that exact moment that they die in that fiery explosion, the little boy wakes up screaming from a nightmare. <laughs> It's really happened. I know how it ends. I know how it ends. Right. Is there subtext that he's a mutant and this is actually a superhero origin story? Like he's <sighs> Professor X? How would, think, he, do, how would he know? Do you know what I think the subtext actually is? Because that he's a bedwetter and he that, got it from his father. Well, that, that <laughs> probably Queen Bee was abusing him. How did he know the exact moment of her death? Because he, because he, he's a little psychic. In presentient, he was like he was ha he was having dreams of that very I'm headed toward mountains and then every time he'd get to the mountain he'd wake up so finally he oh wow he sees maybe what happened maybe he he's is psychic. a mutant how would yeah, he know he's psychic. I yeah I'm telling you there was so much subtext darling in the au revoir of Joan Crawford this is, I think, a lesser entry. And it's also so similar to Harriet Craig. Very similar. And I think Harriet Craig is the better film. Harriet Craig is the better film. I don't believe there's any homicide in it. No, there's no homicide. But it's, or... it's a Southern family where she's really controlling and being a bitch. But I would say that this is a lesser entry. But damn, like, I like so enjoyed it. Booby texted me last night. He was like, I didn't like this film. This is a bad film. Well, film. it was a long intro. And I was like, oh, what a bad film. Queen Bee equals bad film. It's such a bad <laughs> film. <laughs> and then it started to get a little interesting when when But you had also watched it right after watching an episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. Right. And RuPaul's Drag uh, so Race. I was like, hyped up. Is and also like RuPaul's Drag Race is all the energy is like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And this film, even though this film is only it's only 90 minutes. It feels like two and a half hours. Oh, my God. It, no, it, it really, really does. Listen, you don't really. It, it's, it's only 90 minutes. OK, it's fine. 90 yes, minutes. yes, it's slow, but, you know, it's hot in the South. They move slow. Yes. Um, also, you know, it's not her best film. It's not. Joan was actually a really great actress, but she's not acting in this film. She's just she's doing Being her herself. thing. She's doing yeah. Joan. She's, she's camping just, it up. She knows what she is at this point as a yep. performer, and she's giving it to you. You know I will. And I do also want to mention, like, so in the morning, she gets out of bed and she has her little dressing gown. Then she takes a shower. When she comes out of the shower in that in that morning jacket, that sparkly morning jacket is fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. And somehow, again, after the shower, full face of paint. Full face. And she's about to put a uh, cold cream on a full face of paint. Ugh. Joan, Joan. So if you haven't seen any Joan Crawford films, I don't know that this is the one to start with. Maybe not the one to start with, but, but it's definitely. You know what? Get yeah. into it. It's Queen Bee, 1955. It's Joan Crawford, for God's sake. Yes. That's, that's yeah. our review of Queen Bee. Get into it, kids. Buzz Get off. into it. Yeah. <laughs>